Hello, my friends. Welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. We're going to read a story today called Kesia. It's from Amar Chitrakata. So it's a, it's a really funny story. It's about someone who is a miser. A miser is someone who is very wealthy. He has a lot of money or she has a lot of money, but they're tight fisted. They don't want to spend money even if they have it, even for things that are necessities, not even for their families. They just want to keep on saving money and hoarding it away for really no reason at all. They're not even spending it for their enjoyment. So this is a story of one such miser called Kesia. Let's get started. Kesia. Long ago, there lived a miser, Kesia. He was the king's treasurer. One day, as he was going home, what does he see there? Ooh, someone's eating something. The guy goes, he's eating puras. He's thinking, it's such a long time since I have eaten puras. And he's thinking as he's going home, I could ask my wife to make some. But the cost. <laughs> oh, when Kesia returned home, the wife says, you look sad. What's the matter? And he says nothing. She says, tell me what's wrong. Is, is the king angry with you for some reason? And he says, no. And then she asks, well, have the servants, have any of the servants asked for a raise? And he says, oh, no, they're all good people. And then she says, well, what's the matter then? And he says, well, if you must know, I have a craving for puras. And then she says, puras, is that all? I'll make some right away. And then she says, in fact, I'll make enough for the whole neighborhood. And he's flipping out. What? Have you taken leave of your senses, woman? And then she goes, all right, I'll make just enough for us. And then he's questioning that too, for us. And then she says, for the children, for you and for me. And then he goes, leave the children out. He's finding a way to cut costs here. And he goes, they may not even care for Puras <laughs> without even asking them. He's like, yeah, they don't like it anyway. And then she says, well, uh, then I'll make just enough for the two of us. And then he says, you don't really want to eat Puras, do you? <laughs> And she says, ah, uh, well, <laughs> and then he tells her the answer. Yeah, I thought as much. Make enough, just enough for me. And then she's a little bit annoyed there in the next panel. And goes, wait, wait, we must be careful. If you make the puras in the kitchen, the aroma will attract the neighbors. And then we'll have to give them some. I'll tell you what we'll do. Look at, look at that look on her face. She's exhausted with this guy being so cheap and miserly. And then here's his plan. He says, we'll take everything we need up to the terrace and you can make the puras up there. And then he said, then she goes up there. And then so Kesia and his wife carried the utensils and ingredients required to make the puras up to the terrace. And he says, nobody here. Good. So then he goes, now nah, you can get to work. So then she's making the puras. She's got the fire going up there. She's frying everything. And then he's just sitting there and waiting. All of this work just for him because he doesn't even want to share with anybody. Sometime later, he's asking, are they ready? And then she says, almost. And then she said, but let them cool. Oh. We have a guest. And he says, a guest? Look at this. This is really strange. There's somebody there who is standing outside of the balcony. Can you see there? He's standing outside of that, of that, that uh, barrier that keeps people from falling off. And then how is he standing up there all the way up on the terrace? And Casey doesn't even wonder that. He just asks, what do you want? And he goes, go away. And then whoever this guest is, is getting closer. And he says to him, do you think you can get a puna by hovering up there? 
He's not even asking how this guy can fly. That's what I found strange as a child. He didn't ask him, how'd you get up there? So he goes, I wouldn't even give you one if you were standing on this terrace. And then boom, the monk, that guy is standing right there on him. He goes, dude, do you think I'll give you a puna just because we're standing on the same terrace? And then he says, I wouldn't even give you one if you were standing beside me. Boom, the monk has moved beside him. But he's sticking to his guns. He can't even spare one. He goes, I won't give you one. I mean it. Then he's sitting right there in front of him. <laughs> Kesari and his wife look at each other. And then he finally says to his wife, okay, give him a small one and let him go away. And they said, no, not that one. That's too big. He goes, make a small one for him. But Kesia's wife found that she could not make a small puda for the uninvited guest. And then he says, that's turned out even bigger. She says, I can't help it. The paste keeps on spreading over the whole pan. There's something very strange going on here. And then he says, you're just a bad cook, that's all. I don't know how she's putting up with him. And then he says, okay, give him that one on top and let him go away. She picks them up and she says, they're all stuck together. So look at that. They're grabbing the puddas. They're pulling, they're pulling. And he says, pull. They pulled so hard that he rolls back. He loses his balance and he goes flipping over to the side of the terrace. And then he's starting to think and he says, my wife was right. Something very strange is going on here. And then, obviously, he's noticed this, this fact and he goes, it is clear we are not dealing with an ordinary man. You think when he was flying around your balcony? <laughs> and then he says, he goes, puts it on the plate and goes, you can have all the Pudas respected, sir. You know, sit and eat. And then this person says, I want them not for myself, but for my Lord Buddha and his disciples. They are waiting for me. Buddha! So you know this takes place actually thousands of years ago during the time of Buddha. And then he bows before him and he goes, oh, for forgive me, I did not know. And then the monk here says, come with me if you wish to meet him. The monk raised his hand and a staircase appeared. Kesia and his wife went down it till finally here we are, the Lord Buddha. Isn't that amazing? His magical staircase just transports them there. Buddha accepted the offering of Puddhas and they were distributed among his monks. Kesia and his wife too got their share. And then he's saying, this is the first time I have shared my food with strangers. And strangely, I feel happy. And then he says to the, his wife, uh, what are you staring at? And she says, the Puddhas. Everyone has eaten, but the tray is as full as before. Weird. Is that cool? And then he says, never have I seen such a wonder. This is the greatest day of my life. So then they're going back home. And then Kesia returned home a changed man. And he says, wife. Tomorrow you will make puddas for the whole neighborhood. The end. Isn't this a cool story? Isn't that interesting? I like it. I like these stories where people turn out, they have these bad qualities in the beginning, like they don't want to share or they're not kind. And then during the story, they change and they become a different person. I love those kind of stories. If you want to tell me what kind of stories you like or what you'd like to see on this channel, email us at IndianStoryReadAlong at gmail.com. All right, and we hope that you'll subscribe to this channel too. So we'll see you again next time.